Hello guys, it's Stephen here back with another match preview. Manchester City play Tottenham Hotspur tomorrow. What should be a massive game and I'm already a little bit nervous. You know I'm already nervous before these kind of games. But of course it's Jose versus Guardiola. Jose Mourinho of Spurs. The team that kick-started this run of form actually. So thank you Spurs. But of course that's a reason to be apprehensive. Because Spurs always manage to shit house against us. But anyway, today we're going to go through the team news. Look at the quotes from the press conference. Uh, talk about the potential lineup And get some views from Matt Hayes from the Tottenham blog as well. Later on in the opposition view segment. It's going to be interesting. Of course I want to say thank you as well to the Patreon producer. Producer currently on this channel, Ahmed Al Ali, who's gone big on the tier support. Patreon.com forward slash esteem company if you want to help support the channel a little bit. Big love to Ahmed Ali, who's sponsoring the videos every day this month. Ahmed's a hero, as are all of you guys, of course. And don't forget as well to make sure to hit the subscribe button because I'm very close to 50,000 now. I need like 200 more. Absolutely nothing. Get me there by the end of the weekend. Come on, guys. 50k for EK would be wonderful. Anyway, let's go on to the overview of this game. Um, of course, it's Pep versus Jose. It's Manchester City versus Spurs. It's always an interesting game, usually for negative reasons for Manchester City. We've been burned so many times recently by this game that I refuse to get excited by it. But, I mean, if we can't feel excited right now, given everything, when can we do? But anyway, Guardiola, of course, was asked about Pep versus Jose and all that kind of stuff. And he was very diplomatic and very polite, as you'd expect from Guardiola. He said about uh, Jose Mourinho... Um, we're pretty much the same. It means that we have been working many years, so it is good for both of us. We do the job we love, and it's and it and it is a good contender. I presume he means he is a good contender. Uh, he was also asked about November's loss to Spurs, of course. You know when we lost two 0 despite battering them and. Don't get me involved in expected goals and all that kind of stuff. He said, it's a coincidence. We lost. They were better in many aspects. Spurs' quality showed more than our qualities, and that is why they beat us. It is a strong team, and we have to do better to beat them, which is true. And in my opinion, it kind of was a pivotal moment. I mean, I'll get into the stats later, so make sure you hang around for the opposition preview bit, because I talk a little bit about the stats that underpin that moment. Um, but basically, it has overturned a Manchester City uh, fall, basically. We haven't lost since that game. And Guardiola was also also asked about the 15 wins in a row and he said quite bluntly in a very Guardiola fashion we are not unbeatable 15 games in a row winning doesn't help us uh, us to start 2-0 up before the start of the game I said many times it is nice it helps us be where we are in the Carabao Cup, FA Cup, Champions League, and especially in the Premier League, but no more than that. And he's right, of course, it doesn't really change the fact that it's 0-0 nil -nil at full uh, start, basically. It doesn't change the fact that we need to turn up and still win the actual games. Maybe it makes teams fear us a little bit more, but it doesn't change anything fundamentally. Uh, people were also asking in the press conference, like, what happened? Uh, was there one day when it suddenly clicked and City found their form, to which Guardiola said, quote, I would not say one day. Maybe one day we will realise we weren't good enough, or the players realise have to do more. We started to win games and the second and third win gave us confidence. We saw that we were not far away from the top but there was not a specific issue. And um, Yeah, and he's right. And then he went on to talk about how everyone trained really hard and worked really hard and all that kind of stuff. And he's right. I mean, I think largely we weren't doing anything particularly different. We just kind of got a little bit of luck. We trusted in the system, kept working hard and eventually turned our form around. Um, and Gundogan, of course, is a big part of that. And Gundogan, of course, has been voted Premier League Player of the Month as Guardiola has been uh, voted Premier League Manager of the Month. But Gundogan uh, play the month, which is wonderful. Uh, Ilkay Pizaz Gundogan, as Nicola named him. Uh, Guardiola said, it's well deserved. I'm happy for him. A lot of goals, a lot of minutes, a lot of good actions. Yeah, he's absolutely quality. In terms of the team news, um, big news, guys. Ruben and Rodri are fine. Yep, Diaz uh, and Rodri are fine. Of course, Diaz missed out the other day with a bit of a stomach bug, i.e. he's probably got the shits or something like that. But apparently he's raring to go, and obviously Rodri went off the other day, and we're all panicking. We're all thinking, oh God, he's not going to be available for this game. But it was just a contact knock and he's totally fine for this game. However, sadly, still no Sergio Aguero. He's not available yet, unfortunately. And likewise, of course, De Bruyne and Ake. And unfortunately, Fernandino is still not available either. Though you would think, hopefully, that we've got enough for this game. So let's go on to the team lineup. I mean, once again, we all know he's going to be in goal. Edison is going to be there, and rightfully so, because he's um, you know, our best keeper and all that kind of stuff. So Edison will be in goal. Then I think, really, I can't really see much more than the back four that played... Well, didn't play the other day against Swansea, you know. Uh, it'll be the one who played against Liverpool. Um, Cancelo, 
Diaz, Stones, uh, Zinchenko, they were all not involved against Swansea. I can personally see every single one of them coming back into the team. It's probably difficult for Laporte and Walker in particular, but that is life, unfortunately. Um, I can see them coming back into the team. Uh, and likewise, I can see Rodri playing in midfield. Guardiola was talking about Rodri, by the way, in the press conference. He said he adapted immediately and he's still young. There are some issues that he has to still learn and he will learn, but he's a really important player for us. A good holding midfielder is good when he plays for the others and not himself. Um... Yeah, and basically, he said, when the team plays good, it's because the whole midfielders are outstanding. And Rodri, I think it's fair to say he's turned many people's opinions around recently. He's obviously a very good footballer. Um, he's getting more and more confident in this team. You can see he's starting to interact with the players around him. He understands where they're going to be and where they're going to need his support. And that, comes, that only comes with time, you know. You can be brilliant straight away, but... It's hard to be brilliant straight away in a position like Rogers, which uh, requires an inherent understanding of where your teammates are going to be and what system we're going to be playing. But Rogers has been absolutely excellent, and I've got no doubt that he'll start at the base of midfield here alongside, well, behind, sorry, uh, Gundogan and obviously uh, Bernardo Silva. Bernardo Silva and Gundogan, hopefully we'll see, like, you know, Cancelo and Zinchenko stepping into midfield, carrying on their form and all that kind of stuff. But currently, that is our strongest midfield, and I don't think anyone can really disagree with that. Up front, I can see very little changes as well. I mean, there's an argument for Mares, maybe. I mean, that the whole thing, will will it be Mares or uh, Foden or Sterling or Jesus or whatever? I reckon Foden will start this one. I think Sterling will as well. Sterling's currently finding a little bit of form. And Foden, of course, is just brilliant and we know that. But Sterling is finding form. Guardiola loves uh, Sterling in a big game. So I reckon it'll be those two playing behind Gabriel Jesus. He's scored four in his last four. And we know Guardiola... Uh, if he finds a reason to play Jesus, he will choose that reason. And Jesus is starting to find a little bit of form. And I think Guardiola credited Jesus with the changing of the game, basically, against Liverpool. When he came on, made such an impact to our shape. So I don't, I don't see any reason at all why Guardiola won't um, start Jesus there. And to be honest, in my opinion, looking at that team, right now, of all the available players, so I'm not including De Bruyne, Aguero, Fernandinho... Um, and so on. Uh, of all the available players right now, I think that's probably our strongest 11, so I can't really complain there. It makes an awful lot of sense to me. So, that is the team I will go for. Uh, I think you'll go for. Let me know down in the comments what you would do personally. On to the opposition. Well, let's get on to um, let's hand it over first to Matt Hayes from the Tottenham Blog YouTube channel. There'll be a link on screen right now, of course, uh, to Matt's channel. It's really good. I've been involved in his previews. A lovely lad. He's only a relatively new channel, but he's doing very well. Go and give Matt's channel a subscribe. But here's Matt's thoughts on the game. Stephen, thanks for asking me to, to take part in this video. Uh, it's it's not a game I'm particularly confident heading into. Um, I've only ever predicted a defeat for Spurs once before, uh, and that was last Thursday against Chelsea. And I think I'm going to have to do it again this time. You know, our defence is is absolutely terrible. And it, look, it's it's as simple as that. You know, I hate to say it, but we've lost four of our last five games. Just conceded five goals against Everton uh, in the FA Cup on Wednesday. Now, look, we're not going to play. Uh, the same way against E as we did against Everton. We're going to play with a much, much lower block. And I can't imagine there'll be too much expansive football going forward for us. Probably Harry Kane dropping deep uh, and pinging those balls either side with the likes of Son or Bergwijn to, to try and get in behind um, what is, what's not the pace of centre-back partnership for Manchester City and with that high line that E will probably employ as well. I think there is scope for us to catch E like that, but it's just hard to look past uh, City getting quite a few on the score sheet. Uh, we've just been terrible defensively and from set pieces, from balls into the box. And at the beginning of the season, we did have that kind of, uh, the kind of safety net of, okay, but we're, we're good defending in open play. I think up until November, we had the second best defence from open play in the top five leagues of Europe, behind only Diego Simeone's Atletico Madrid, who are running away with that La Liga title. We don't have that anymore. We are so vulnerable. Uh, our midfield is, is, is weak in possession. Our defence just cannot seem to tackle. They can't seem to clear the ball. Even in possession, they're so poor as well. And with the likes of Phil Foden on top form, uh, of course, Raheem Sterling as well, and Ilkay Gundogan, who's become probably, for me, the best midfielder in the Premier League this season. There's a lot of players in there who can hurt Spurs. Now, look, I know, I think in, in the last three games we played against Manchester City in the league, we've uh, had seven shots and scored six goals or something. So there has been an insane, insane... Uh, rate for Spurs in terms of putting that ball in the back of the net but the confidence is just drained from from me and, and every Spurs fan at the moment I think with the the recent run of form as I said us having lost four of our last five Man City and that incredible run of, of 15 consecutive wins really looking to, to run away with that title as quickly as possible and that the feeling in the Spurs fan base now out of the FA Cup top four seems to be a, a huge stretch and of course playing yourselves in the Carabao Cup final I think uh, dejected is the, is the main word we can use for that Spurs fan base and I think it's going to be added to on, on Saturday with a, what could prove to be a very comfortable, comfortable win for Manchester City. I, I was on the last Men and Winner podcast uh, the other night and I, I predicted the 3-0 victory uh, for City. And I think I'm going to have to have to stick with that one, unfortunately. Of course, I hope that that isn't the case. But 
you know, I, I always make my predictions with my head rather than my heart. And I think this could be a, a really, really easy one for Man City. I tell you what, I absolutely love hearing that very mass voice. <laughs> it's wonderful stuff. And him predicting a Manchester City victory, Matt, I'll take it, pal. And to be honest, um, Matt's not really, uh, his form, his apprehension isn't really, it isn't baseless. Since that 2 0 victory against us, which I felt was still a little bit undeserved, if I'm being honest, they played 21 games, Spurs. They've only won 10 of them. Uh, and they've lot those wins, by the way, include the likes of Ludogratz and Antwerp, uh, Minos of Europe, and being honest, Marine. I don't even know where Marine played. What league are Marine actually in? Um, uh, as, as, as a sea creature or something. I don't know. Uh, Marine. <laughs> what am I on about? Marine. They, basically, Ludogratz, Antwerp, Marine, Wickham. Uh, relegation candidates West Brom and Sheffield United uh, then also championship sides Brentford and Stoke uh, so it's not that's eight of the games by the way it's not like a high quality opposition there and they also did beat Arsenal and Leeds so I can't really not give them the credit for that but still I think it's fair to say their form has tanked and they've lost to Leicester Liverpool Brighton Chelsea Everton and drawn a bunch of games as well whereas since that game for Manchester City uh, we have won uh, sorry we played 22 games and won 19 of them losing zero uh, and drawing against West Brom United uh, West Brom, West Bromwich Albion and United, sorry, West Brom United, West Bromwich um, and United, and of course, uh, a pretty dead game against Porto. So our record has basically been impeccable. So cheers for that, Spurs. But having said that, um, obviously Spurs have quality. Their recent results haven't been good. Of course, he played the other day and defensively, they were abysmal, um, conceding five to Everton, but they still have the likes of, you know, Harry Kane and Son. So they do have players going forward who can score goals. Um, Harry Kane, obviously, back involved now as well. They've got Lamella, Bergwijn, who scored against us before, and Dembele is a good player who's very good against us last time round. Uh, they have a very good team that if they turn up and they know how to frustrate us then I, I think we have to be apprehensive but confident but um aware basically because their form has tanked and ours is good so I don't see any reason why we can't turn up in terms of my prediction even though obviously I joke about being dead nervous and I have a little bit of them being honest I still feel Manchester City have got too much here and I can't really I'd be naive uh, and in disingenuous to not predict a Manchester City victory so I'm going to say uh, Manchester City will win this game 2-0, it's going to be reverse. I mean, I might be wrong. Maybe they'll score. They'll get in on a counter-attack or something like that. But I'm going to say 2-0, a clean sheet. I'm going to be optimistic. I'm going to predict the goal scorers as well. Phil Foden and Gabriel Jesus is what I'm going for goal scorers as well. Fingers crossed I'm right. I don't know if I'm going to be right. Thank you guys for watching this video, though. Let me know down in the comments once again um, what you reckon is going to happen. Uh, uh, your predictions, your lineups, your scores. And go check out Matt's channel as well, of course. And thank you to all the patrons currently scrolling down the side of the screen. My absolute heroes and my Patreon producer, Ahmed Al Ali, has gone into the top tier. What an absolute legend. Big love to every single one of you. I'm not doing a watch long tomorrow, by the way, because, big announcement, I'm on Don Robbie's channel. Yep. You know, Mr. AFTV, Don Robbie's new channel. I'm doing a watch along on his channel. The first ever watch along on his new channel. And little old Steven's going to be involved. I'll be, I'm very excited for that. I'm off to London for it. It's going to be loads and loads of fun. Uh, I'll see you over there tomorrow. Join it. Be, yeah, support me in the comments and all that kind of stuff. For now, though, come on, City.